In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a hover card using GSAP on Elementor Pro. And we are going to be using containers. Um, that's just what I'm going to be using moving forward because I love using them and they are the future. So this is what we're going to be creating. So as you can see, whenever I hover, we have this really nice, clean timeline hover effect, right? Starts from the top there, we get a gradient, our header loads in, and then our divider also grows here. And then our, our paragraph here goes up and fades in, and our bun does as well. And it also does the same thing reversed, as you can see there. It's a really nice animation. So hopefully you guys end up finding this video helpful. If you do, make sure to like it for the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos. I hope you enjoy. Right, let's go ahead and begin here. Open up your Elementor editor. I went ahead and set up a dark canvas. You can do the same in case you want to follow along, but you can have a light canvas. It doesn't really matter. Or you can add this to your existing website. Now, if you don't know how to add a dark background, go into settings here, go into style and then go ahead and click on the background type um, and then set up a black background here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and begin. Go ahead and add a container. Uh, we're going to make this a container row. And then let's go ahead and set up the minimum height. We want this to be 600. If we can go to advance, go to padding, and then we can set this to 100. Now, this is just my preference. Um, you can pretty much set this to pretty much however you would like. Um, but we're just setting it up like this for now. Of course, if you want to switch it around, you can. You don't have to have that much padding. Your height can be a little bit lower. Um, this is just what I'm going to go ahead and set up. And I may change the height a little bit later. Just letting you guys know. Okay. So now that we have this set up, Go ahead and right click inside your container here. We're going to add a new container. And then we're going to add another container. So just right click over here, add an, another container. And we're going to go ahead and set up three um, child containers, just like this. Okay. Now we're going to add a container. Or what we can do is just right click our first child container and then add a new container. Okay, actually, you know what? Sorry, we want to add a container inside our child container. So we couldn't do it that way. So instead, we're just going to drag and drop a container here inside our existing child container. And go ahead and click on your child container. Go into advance and then remove the padding. There we go. Now let's go ahead and click on this inner child container. And let's adjust the minimum height. We're going to click on the pencil here and we're going to do a hundred percent. There we go. Now, later on, we'll set it up for the rest of the child containers. But for right now, we're just going to be working with this one here. Okay. And it's just so then we have a visual of how everything's going to look. All right. So now from here, let's go back to our elements. Let's drag and drop our heading. Um, Let's drag and drop our divider. And I'm just going to set this to white for now. And then let's drag and drop our text editor right under our divider and make sure it's all inside the inner child container. And then we're going to add a button. Okay. Now click on your inner child container. We want to set things to the middle here. So our justify content, set that to center. And we already have some padding that's default to this container. We're going to leave it as is because that works for us. Let's go ahead and start adjusting our um, elements here. Um, click on your first headline. Let's change this to like the video if you guys haven't already. Changes to go to style, changes to white, and then go ahead and click on your divider. Let's go ahead and adjust the weight on this. See what we can do here because we're already in style. 
So we can maybe set this up. I think we're gonna set this up to about four. Four should be fine. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I feel like three will look kind of clean. Let's do three. And then the gap, let's not have a gap in that. It's totally fine. And then let's set the width to zero. There we go. Okay. Now let's go into our text editor here. Go into style, set this to white. Let's go into our button. Um, we're gonna leave the name, that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and make the background transparent here for the button. And then we're gonna give this a solid border, one pixel all around, make sure it's white, just like this. Just go to your style and you're gonna see those settings here. So now we should have it set up like this. That looks nice. Now we just need to add a background um, to our child's container. So let's click on our child's container, go into style, background. Let's click on this box here and we can choose this image here. You guys can pretty much choose any image you would like. We're gonna set the position to center and our display size to cover. There we go. Now, before we add our code in here, cause we're almost there, we need to go ahead and add our um, CSS class to our elements and also our containers. So let's start off with the one that we're already on, our first child's container. And let's go into advance and we're gonna call this card-container on your CSS class, card-container. Now on your inner child's container, go into advance, we're gonna call this card dash overlay, just like that. And that's gonna give us our background overlay effect. So let's click on our heading here, go to advance. We're gonna call this card dash headline. Click on our divider. Now for our divider, we're not gonna be adding a CSS class. We're gonna be targeting a default CSS class that comes with the divider element already. So we don't need to add anything to that. Let's go into our text editor, go to advance, and let's call this um, card-des for description. And then let's click on our button, go into advance. Let's call this card-btn for button. There we go. Now that's all set there. Now go ahead and hit update. Let's go ahead and preview this. It's looking good. Now let's go ahead and go to the dashboard here. Let's go to custom code, add new. In case you didn't see that, hover over Elementor, then go to custom code. Now we're gonna give this a name. We're gonna call this GSAP hover card. We're gonna load this on the body end and go ahead and paste the code that I've provided in the description. Go ahead and hit publish. Now we wanna go ahead and load our script here on the page that we're currently editing. So we're gonna to go to pages and we're gonna search for the page. I believe I called this hover box. Um, if you have it set to the front page, you can do front page um, or you can choose a specific page here. We can click save and close. There we go. Now let's go ahead and test this out. Let's go back to our um, editor here. Let's hit live preview. It's good. There we go. Now we can see that it's working perfectly. It's really awesome. But you guys probably did see that little issue, right? Whenever we refresh, you can see that for a moment there, we see the elements and we don't want that. So what we need to do, go into your editor. We're gonna go ahead and target these elements right now with some CSS and we're gonna hide them. So go ahead and click on your container here, go into advance, and then this is where we're gonna add a custom CSS. Now, if you are, if you don't have Elementor Pro, you can add this in the custom either. So we're gonna do dot card dash headline, comma, we're gonna do card dot, sorry, dot card dash 
df comma and then dot card dash btn now i will have this down in description in case you just want to paste it in here we're going to do opacity of zero we're going to hit update now you notice that we won't have that issue anymore there we go this is all looking good. Towards the end of the video, I'm gonna explain the code for those of you guys that wanna learn a little bit more about GSAP. So real quick, let's check mobile and make sure that everything's mobile responsive. We are gonna come across some issues, right? Actually, you know what, before we do that, let's go ahead and duplicate um, this card here so we can go ahead and apply this to other um, other containers here, other child containers, I should say. So for right now, I'm gonna comment this out so I can still see the text and I can edit it if I need to. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and go into my child container. I'm gonna duplicate it and then duplicate it here. And then I'm gonna remove these other empty containers. Now what we can do is we can just go in here into our, uh, make sure that you that you click on your child container, not your inner child container. Go to style, change this image here. You can even change the text. We can call this subscribe. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, um, that would be amazing if you guys could subscribe to the channel. And then we can go ahead and change this image here. Make sure that you click on your child, not your inner child. Um, there we go. And then we can just leave that as is, or we can just call this headline just so then you guys know that it's different there. Now that's looking good. Let's see if it will just works automatically with my other elements. Cause sometimes you'll notice that if you just try duplicating something, it just, it won't work. It'll only work with one. Um, let's go to remove this. There we go. So now you can see that it works perfectly. And we have that really nice animation effect, right? Now let's check this on mobile in case we got to make adjustments. But before we do that, let's just uh, set ourselves up here and just do it within the editor, right? Let's go into tablet. That's looking pretty good, but I always like to go ahead and I don't want to make this video too long. So I'm going to add 10 from the right and 10 from the left there just to give it some little spacing here on the edges. There we go. And there we go. Now real quick guys, in case you want to go ahead and expand um the height on this and add some padding to this because we may want more spacing on mobile you guys got to make sure whenever you click on your child um child container here make sure you add in that you do this to the inner child container go in here go to advance and then go ahead and set up some padding um we will for right now just set it up for all of them and then i'm gonna uncheck this and now I'm, let's say i'm gonna do like 30 from the top and then 30 from the bottom there we go. Now we will see that it's gonna work here. Let's go ahead and, and you did see that issue where it loaded is because I, if you remember, I ended up commenting out the CSS. So that's why we have that issue. As you can see, it works perfectly. If you end up adding the padding to the child container, you will go ahead and have issues. You probably will have the overlay. You, um, you won't have it cover the entire container. The overlay won't cover the entire container. So please guys, make sure you add your spacing on your inner child container. And everything else looks good. Uh, real quick, let's go ahead and just go back into our container here, custom CSS, and let's uncomment this here. Hit update. Now you can see we won't have that issue anymore. And everything works how it's supposed to. So we're all set there. Now, of course, I could apply that same style to all of them, but I'm sure you guys get the gist of that. Don't want to make this video too long. Okay, so now for those of you that want to stick around for the code, let's go over the code here. Oh, it's actually right here, so we can go over it. Alrighty. So, um, first of all, we just have a script there. So then we can initialize our script. We have a function. It's going to basically load. Um, and then we go ahead and have, uh, we have a variable of set interval, pretty much gonna wait uh, at least about 500 milliseconds um, to start a GSAP. But of course we're gonna wait until certain stuff is loaded. So we have our Ellie Builder uh, variable and basically checking 
if the Elementor editor is active because we don't want to run the GSAP on the Elementor editor. So um, that's why I created that variable. So then I have um, an if statement here and we're pretty much checking that the window.gsap is loaded and the window.scroll trigger is loaded. Basically GSAP is loaded and then um, the window.gsap, uh, sorry, GSAP is loaded. And then we also don't, you see we have a question mark for false. We don't wanna run this. We, we basically wanna run this only if we're not in the editor. So if this is not active, then we wanna run the GSAP. We're gonna go ahead and register our scroll trigger um, plugin and then over here, we're going to initiate our um, function that we have down here. And then we're going to clear the interval once that's done all loading. So um, our function here, let's go over our hover card function. So we have a variable of card containers, and that is basically getting all of my card um, containers that we have, pretty much all of the child containers. Um, so we're getting that. That's why we have a selector all instead of just a query selector. And then we're uh, targeting that variable and we're running a, a uh, for each loop. We're looping through pretty much whatever gets um, uh, whatever gets hovered, basically. That's what we end up checking down here. Um, so we're, loop we're looping through every single one. And then we pretty much have a uh, variable timeline for timeline. We have our timeline set to pause, uh, pause set to true. So that's pause and then a time scale so we can um, speed up our timeline a little bit. Um, and then here, we have a uh, TL, we're targeting our variable there. Uh, we have a two, so basically once this starts, once someone hovers over it, um, we go ahead and run this. And this is how it works basically. I'm gonna go over the, the timeline here, but basically under that you can see because it pretty much skips this for now. Um, and then you can see we have a um, um, an event listener and we're pretty much waiting until someone hovers over one of the, the child containers or one of the cards, I should say, the hover cards. And we have a mouse enter. If a mouse enter, we pretty much play our timeline here. You can see we have TL play. Now, if they if they uh, mouse leave, so basically if they uh, hover out, uh, we have it set to a TL reverse. So it's just going to start from the bottom and then, and then uh, go back to the top there. Let me go over the timeline here. So pretty much we have a TL2. So basically whenever we hover, it's going to go ahead and target the card overlay. It's going to set a background um, RGBA, and we're going to get that um, that overlay effect, and we're going to give it a duration of 0 0.5. Um, and then we have a from 2. So this part isn't, we don't really, we could do a 2, but I set it as a uh, the from 2 just in case. Um, I just wanted to do that, but we could just take that off. We really needed to, but it's fine. So basically, we're starting off, uh, we're targeting the card headline. We're setting the opacity to, to 0, and the Y we're setting it to 10. So basically it's going to automatically be uh, pushed down, right? And then whenever uh, we start the timeline, it's going to go from there and then it's going to go ahead and show, we're going to set the opacity to one. So it's going to show the headline and it's going to look like it's moving back up, right? And we pretty much are doing the same thing here over and over, um, except for the car, the Elementor divider separator. So this is a default um, Elementor class that comes with the, the divider um, element. And we're pretty much just targeting the width of, of the percentage. And then we're going from zero to uh, to 22%. Uh, we have a duration of 0 0.8. Of course, you can speed that up if you wanted to. Um, and then basically right here, we're targeting the card description. We're pretty much doing the same thing that I mentioned with the headline, zero opacity. And then we, we, uh, we you know, bring it down initially. And then whenever you hover over it, the timeline is active. It goes from here to here. So it uh, makes it opacity one shows the headline and it also goes back up right on the Y axis, which is pretty much just, you know, vertical, um, top to bottom. And then, and then we're basically doing the same thing to the button. So it's all the same. Now, for some reason, this doesn't work and you kind of move this around. Um, you can add TL on here, by the way, um, just to be safe. We might, I might just do that. Um, but because I just want to make sure that it works for everyone um, in case you guys have that issue there, but it should automatically be working anyway. You guys really shouldn't have that issue there. Um, but you probably could have moved this a little more. There we go. Okay. So, and then I already went over the event listener and then uh, we're pretty much loading in our uh, GSAP scripts and our uh, scroll trigger scripts on here. 
And that's pretty much it, guys. If you guys have any questions, just comment down below and I'll try to help you guys out. If you guys did find this video helpful, make sure to like it for the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos. Thanks for watching.